Today, we're gonna giddy up with Gideon. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today for a War of the Spark Planeswalker deck unboxing. So we've got the Gideon deck, which is white black. We're gonna be cracking on in to this, to this lovely creature. Now, as an added note, there is a code in here that will give me a free copy of the deck on Magic Arena. So what I'm gonna do is later today, I am going to put that code in and we're gonna hang out over on Twitch and play some games of Magic with this. So if you like that idea, that idea and you wanna have some fun, come on over to my Twitch. All that being said, let's see what's actually in the deck. All right, so here we go. Let's just pop on into this deck see what we've got okay so we got to free the planeswalker from from this plasticky grip so we're starting out with obviously the key card for the deck idian the oath idian <laughs> idian the goth sworn all right gideon the oath sworn two white four colors for a four loyalty planeswalker whenever you attack with two or more non-gideon creatures put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures Plus two, until end of turn, Gideon the Oathsworn becomes a 5-5 five, five white soldier creature that is still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. And minus nine, exile Gideon the Oathsworn and each creature your opponent controls. Not too shabby. I mean, it's not mind-blowingly powerful, but it's not, it's not awful either. And I do like the fact that he has that static ability that whenever you attack with two or more non-Gideon creatures, they each get a bonus. So that's all right. He's not too shabby. Let's move on. Let's move on into the deck proper. Should be two booster packs in here. Two booster packs. Indeed, we do have two booster packs. All right. And we've got the deck itself and an insert. And it says, hey, before you play... Let's take a look and unfold this. Unfold this out here. Okay, so this 60 card deck is ready for battle. So don't art start adding new cards just yet. Play a few games to understand how your deck works, then open the included booster packs. All right, so Gideon is a born leader who inspires his allies to fight and win against seemingly impossible odds. Keep your opponent at bay while you fill the board with creatures, weakening your opponent's forces with Kaya's expert assistance. When you've gathered enough troops to dominate the battlefield, unleash a massive game-winning attack. And then it's got some terms to note, tells you what counters flying in lifelink. And then down here, Gideon the Oathsworn. Gideon Dura is renowned, is renowned across many worlds for his courage and altruism. He's fiercely faced down everything from interdimensional monstrosities to gods, and he would gladly lay down his life to protect his friends. As the ultimate conflict with Nicol Balls approaches, he must make difficult choices about what it truly means to be a hero. I don't think he really does have to make difficult choices. You just said he'd gladly sacrifice his life for, for his friends. So, yeah. And on the other side, we have, what are Planeswalkers? Planeswalkers are formidable, formidable allies you can summon to fight alongside you. Once a Planeswalker is on your side of the battlefield, you can start using their abilities right away. Because they're so powerful, you'll want to focus on defeating your opponent's Planeswalkers. When you declare attackers, you can choose... All right, yeah, this is kind of dull. Let's just, uh, I mean, that's some pretty basic. I, I, I got bored halfway through that. We're just going to stop. See the, uh, the see the box artwork here? That's not too shabby. You got Gideon here on the front. Got some crazy black swirls. Honestly, this is a nice looking box. I like that. All right, and the deck itself. Let's take special care first of all. One second, I just need to just need to unwrap the plastic off of here and grab out the code for the arena deck that we're going to be trying out on Twitch over there, so I don't accidentally flash that on stream. And I should say not on stream in video. Dum -bum -bum, ba -da -bum -ba -dum. Okay, so we're starting out here with Command the Dreadhorde, which is a black sorcery, two black, four colorless. Choose any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers in graveyards. Command the Dreadhorde deals damage to you equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. 
Put them onto the battlefield under your control. It's pretty cool because it lets you reanimate a bunch of creatures, but at a really steep cost. And planeswalkers, too, at a steep cost, though. That's going to cost you a lot of life. And the artwork is pretty nice here with Liliana and an army of Eternals. All right, then we've got Oath of Kaya. Kaya is joining the Gatewatch. One black, one white, one colorless. When it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to any target. You gain three life. And whenever an opponent attacks a planeswalker, you control with one or more creatures. This oath deals two damage to that player, and you gain two life. All right, not too bad. Then we got Gideon's Battle Cry. Now, this is one of the cards that only exists inside the deck. You can't get these in War of the Spark Boosters. And apparently, you can't get to see them focused on. Come on now, what, what, what's the deal? Why is it? Why is it acting like this? Come on, camera, work with me. There we go. Gideon's Battle Cry. Two white, two colors for a sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter in each creature you control. You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Gideon the Osworn. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you do, search your library this way, shuffle it. So this is a sorcery that will beef up each of your guys a little bit and let you search for your Gideon. We got two copies of that in case you didn't see. Then we've got the Uncommon Kea, Bane of the Dead. Six mana for a seven loyalty, your opponents and permanents. Your opponents and permanents, your opponents control with hexproof can be the target of spells and abilities as though they didn't have hexproof. Minus three X out target creature. Kind of a steep cost, in all honesty. Then we've got a Johnny's Pride Mate. How many of these do we get here? One, two, three. You get three of Johnny's Pride Mates. I feel like these are, are fairly well known. Honestly, don't really need to go over what they do. You can quickly take a look on screen if you want to see what they do. Then you got Charmed Stray, one, two, three, four. Okay, good, I was gonna say. If you're gonna have Charmed Stray in there, you're gonna wanna have multiples because this thing's ability is whenever it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other Charmed Stray you have out. So having fewer of these would make it definitely weaker overall, so a playset is the way to go. All right, Enforcer Griffin, what the hell is this? This is just a five mana, three, four flyer. Yikes, that's not a good card. All right, <laughs> then we've got makeshift battalions. How many of those do we get? We get three makeshift battalions. This is three mana for a three, two. And whenever it attacks and at least two other creatures attack, it gets plus one, plus one. So that's not too bad for a common. I mean, it's definitely not amazing. These cards are gonna end up sliding everywhere. Why don't I ah, grab them in the pack too? Why don't I just move this over here for the moment? All right, let us continue onwards. Trusted Pegasus. We've got two Trusted Pegasus. These things helped me out in my first uh, my first sealed event playing War of the Spark. It's not too shabby. I mean, it lets you it lets you evade your opponent a bit, but overall, kind of underwhelming. But that's what the Planeswalker decks don't tend to have a ton of power in them. We get one War Screecher, unless the order of this deck's all wonky and they're going to give us more. This is just yeah, it's underwhelming. I mean, two mana for a 1-3 flyer that has a big expensive ability isn't the worst, but it's definitely not great. Vampire Opportunist. This is another cheap to put out, big expensive effect kind of card. Eh. Cruel Celebrant. Look at that artwork. This card is not too bad, in all honesty. I mean, two mana for a 1-2. When uh, when this or another creature or Planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses a life when you gain a life. So, I mean, that, that has some potential use right there. So that's all right. They got three of those included inside the deck. Not too shabby. Then we've got Gideon's Company. This will be another of the cards that are only available in the Planeswalker deck. So this is one white, three colorless human soldier. Whenever you gain life, put two plus one, plus one counters on it. All right. And... Four mana, put a loyalty counter on target Gideon Planeswalker. Oh, that's kind of funky. That's actually kind of funky. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three with those abilities, and you got Gideon standing all in front of his troops. That's cool. I'm down with that. How many do we get? You get three of those. Okay, not too shabby. And then we've got Orzhov Guildgates for mana fixing. So you've got four, four white-black options here. And then a mm -mm -mm, bunch of planes and a bunch of swamps. And as usual, there's some other stuff tucked in behind here. So let's see what else we got. We've got Bond of Discipline, five mana. Oh, this is just, this is an underwhelming five mana. Tap all your opponent's creatures and you get lifelink till end of turn kind of thing. Not very exciting. And we've got Obnixilus' Cruelty for some creature control. So we got three of those. Three Obnixilus' Cruelties to give creatures minus five, minus five. And here is, I believe this is the other, yep, this card is specific to the Planeswalker deck as well. This is called Desperate Lunge. Okay, come on, focus. 
Oh, there we go. Oh, come on, man. Don't tease me like that. You just focused. Come on, baby. Come on. So, all right. I'll, t I'll tell you what, guys what it does here. Desperate lunge. One white, one colorless instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying till end of turn. You gain two life. Eh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not amazing, but it's definitely not too shabby. The artwork is awesome. You can see Gideon coming down on Nicol Bolas here. That's that's pretty dope. And the flavor text says, Ravnica held its breath as the hero of the resistance, their last hope, flew through the sky, his dark sword ready to strike a god. All right. So I'd say overall, the deck isn't too, it's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Um, and you know what? I, I say let's let's see what's in the booster packs too. Before I was thinking about hanging on to them, but my curiosity makes me not want to wait. Let's just find out what's inside the booster pack. So in the first booster pack, so for uncommons we got Tybalt's Rager, Angras Rampage. This is a good one. Obnixilis the Twisted and. Massacre Girl. All right. All right. I did a video on Massacre Girl. Huh. You're not the real deal, Massacre Girl. All right. So that's the first pack. And let's see what's in the second pack. Let's see what's in the second. I'm going to open it off camera because I know that drives some people crazy. You need to unwrap it on camera. How do I know you didn't just make this pack up? Deal with it, you cry baby. Deal with it. Cry to your mother. Cry to your mother. All right. First, we got a cruel celebrant. That brings us up to four. Firemind Vessel, uh, reminding me of the annoying novel that I did a video on. Dovin, Hand of Control, and Tolsimir, Friend of Wolves. Well, that's underwhelming. Underwhelming to say the least. So, let's hand it back over to me. All right, so we have seen the contents of the deck, but we have yet to see the deck in action. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch later on with this deck putting it through the paces, seeing just how good it is. Can it compete at all? Is it fun to play? Who knows? We will find out on Twitch today. So I invite you to come on by and hang out over there. It doesn't cost anything to use Twitch for any of you who didn't know that. I see comments occasionally with people saying, oh, doesn't it cost money? Nah, it's free. Come on by and hang out. If you wanna make sure you don't miss the stream, you can hop into my Discord and I will let you guys know when the stream is starting through the Discord, that out of the way, let us roll the Golden Scroll. The people who are back my channel on Patreon or through channel memberships, thanks very much for having my back friends, and I will see all of you guys over on Twitch. But for now, I'm history, baby.